have checked everything except your final exam review. Okay. So once that's finished, you will be exempt. Okay. Let me get class started first, and then. Uh, where were you on Friday? I had an AP exam. Oh yeah, makeup. Yes. Sleep or something? How did it take 20 minutes? No, I'm kidding. Uh, Does anybody else have textbook? Oh, yeah. You don't have to bring it back until next year. Wait for it? No, okay. It's not funny. I wouldn't miss it. Other two classes are calculus, but we don't have finals in those classes. Oh. So that's fourth and sixth, but I'll be in and out, so it's a little bit harder to catch me. Hold on. So no more textbooks for anybody today? Okay, give me 20 seconds here to get these checked in so I don't forget. Um, so today is our last full day. So this will be your last chance to um, finish up the final review, get confirmation that you're exempt, uh, ask questions, and I know we've got a couple questions ready to go, so I will take those here in just a second. Um, <coughs> again, please don't assume you're exempt. You need to double check with me before the class period's over. It is pretty rare, but I have had students assume they exempted, and then they were not. And then they had to take the final in August or something when they found out. So not. It doesn't sound fun. But then you not get everything. 
Well, if you really learned it, then no. Are they able to go back and change the grading? We can for certain circumstances. Okay. Like something like that, we can fill out a form. But we always have to have a reason, so it has to get approved. But anything's possible if you put your mind to it. Okay. Show you that and then check. Okay. I'm not ready for that. Oh, sorry. Okay, um, so our final, and actually I guess all the finals, as far as I know, this is the schedule. So ours would be the very last one, which would be from 1025 to 1155. Um, I mentioned that if you were not able to, well, not, not able, you guys should be able, uh, it should take pro top priority. But I also have pre-cal classes 0A, 0B, and first period. So I'll be giving the pre-cal final during those periods anyway. So if it's more convenient for you to come tomorrow morning or Wednesday morning, that is equally okay with me. It would be a slightly different version of the test, but not harder, easier, just a different version. Um, so that's a possibility. Also, if you're taking the final, it does go in as a 50 point test, but it can also go in as a test replacement. So if the final exam score is higher than your lowest test grade, you will get it as a 50 point test and it will override your lowest test grade. We'll let you use a calculator on the entire final and we let you use a note card, but only if it's handwritten and standard three inch by five inch. You can handwrite on the front or the back. You can put formulas, examples, theorems, whatever is going to make you feel better about it. You're welcome. Um, if you have just the straight up answers, then you might need to explain where you got those. So some of it, a lot of it's multiple choice. So if you have answer one is this and answer two is that and answer three is this, then you, yeah, you'll have to talk to an assistant principal about that. But. Oh, let's go. Oh. Okay, okay. Any questions about uh, the date of our final, the directions of the final, how the final is going to count as a grade? Yeah. Um, will you be here on all these advisory forms? No. Okay. Why? If I get turned down. Then when do you have tests? Seven. If you bring it by, well, I have a first period test. So if you have a seventh period test, you could just bring it by the few minutes between the two. Do you have a first period final? No, but I can just get here a little yeah. bit earlier. Yeah, just come 10 minutes early and then you can drop it off that way. Thank you. That day, that day. Any other directions, information about the final you want to know? Okay, I had a question about the difference quotient. So you might want to look and see if you had a similar question. This was question 24, parts A, B, and C. Um, AJ, do you have a preference on which part of that? So all of these start off the same way, but they all simplify a little bit differently because they're three different question types. So first off with the difference quotient, you have to memorize what the difference quotient is. It's handy if you know where it comes from, which I emphasized when we did this. I think this was over AMI days, but um, it's really just the slope formula for two generic points with a little bit of simplifying. You have to know how to read this. So if the function is this, f of x plus h means go to f of x and everywhere there's an x, you're gonna instead put in x plus h. So that's gonna look like that. Bless you. Bless you. Hope you get better. Thank you. Okay, so this stuff in red matches this stuff in red. The next part of the difference quotient for all problems is subtract the entire function. 
Sometimes you need to distribute that negative, but in this case we don't. And then all needs to be put over H. So that's consistent for parts A, B, and C. The difference quotient is always the same. What this is telling you to do, this is telling you to do, and this te is telling you to do, um, all stays the same. Now in question B, you have to then simplify complex fraction. In question C, or part C, you have to FOIL, distribute, combine like terms. And for this one, the only way to move forward is to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the numerator. So remember what makes something a conjugate is the middle sign changes. So because that was minus, these needs to be plus. I'd say the biggest mistake is people remember to multiply the numerator by this, but then not the denominator. If you only multiply the numerator by this, then you're changing its size. If you multiply the numerator and denominator by this, it's like you're multiplying by one. It's a really fancy one, but anything divided by itself is one. So you go to multiply your fractions together, and the denominator, you get h times all of this stuff, and you would just leave that alone here. h times all of that stuff. But the numerators are going to simplify a lot because we've got two terms times two terms, so we need to FOIL these. So if you multiply the first two together, the square root of 4 minus x plus h times the square root of 4 minus x plus h is just going to be 4 minus x plus h. And I'm just going to distribute the negative. The next part would give you a positive square root of 4 minus x times the square root of 4 minus x plus h. But then the inner part of FOIL is going to be the exact opposite of that. Anytime you multiply something by its conjugate, the outer and inner are going to cancel out anyway. So I'm going to save myself a little bit of a hassle there. And then the last part of FOIL, the square root of 4 minus x times square root of 4 minus x would be 4 minus x. But if one's positive and one's negative, then those are negative as well. So again, there's not much we can do with our denominator. It stays pretty messy. But our numerator, we've got a 4 minus 4, a negative x plus an x, and then we have a negative h. And then the very last step, it's kind of nice that no matter whether it's a question like a, b, or c, the last step was always to divide out the times h with the divided by h. which gives us, I guess we don't need these parentheses, which gives us the answer to that one. Now, fortunately, you don't have to be very successful at this um, in calculus, but this is basically a calculus concept. Um, you're finding the slope of a nonlinear line, a line that's not just straight. The only thing keeping you from having what's called the derivative, which is almost the whole first semester of Cal AB, is taking the limit of this as h approaches zero, but that basically just means you plug in zero for h, and then you have something called the derivative. So, but for us, we want to see that you have practiced with the algebra because that is the harder part, but it's also the parts you have had some practice on. So again, first part and last part are the same for parts A and C, I'm sorry, B and C. C should be the easiest one to simplify because it's foiling and distributing. You just practice that more. B, you're going to have to simplify a complex fraction, but you need to be able to deal with complex fractions over other questions anyway. So, Okay, was there something more specific in there? Anything I'm going over too quickly? Is that okay? Anybody else that's going to ask about this one once? Clarification somewhere. What unit was this quotient stuff in? Um, it was. Oh. I don't think it went in a unit. Section one point two. Is that what that is for? Yeah, but we didn't do it out of the textbook. But yes, that's where it is on there. Oh. 
It was after Law of Sines, Law of Cosines, but before we started I believe so. Or maybe we finished limits. Maybe we did it after limits. I don't remember. But it really didn't fit in a unit. Or no, I, I, I lied. We did it in the limits unit. I remember now. Because I remember talking about the limit as h approaches zero. And I told you it wouldn't be on the test. But if you did that, you could find the derivative from definition, which is when I took calculus in college, I had a teacher who told me every one of her tests was going to have finding a derivative by the definition like this, and sure enough, she did it every single test. There was one of them, which was good because I believed her and was prepared for it. But. Okay, does somebody else have another semester test review question or two ready to go? Yeah, so on number five, it says make a sketch of what the inverse of the given graph would look like, and I didn't know where the graph was. Well, that was part of the uh, question, well, was to figure out if that was... It was supposed to be this, this part up here, with these three points. This was supposed to be the function. It just didn't print off for some reason. Okay. So negative 3, 0, 0, 2, and 2, 6. That was supposed to be the question. And then you were supposed to draw the inverse. So inverse just meant you switch x and y, replot those, and then that's how you know something about the inverse. Sorry about that. I think that didn't copy off last year, too, and I still forgot to fix it. So I need to start writing this stuff down. Okay, another one. Okay, let me get, let you look for just a second. I forgot to put attendance in, so let me do that real quick. And then I'll check again. Starting to pack it up for summer. Do they help you move at all, or do you have to move all the desks and stuff by yourself? Move them where? Oh no, you keep the desk here. Oh wait, are you moving? I'm not moving now. Oh, what do you mean? I moved them there. Huh? Why do you pack up for summer then? Well, so I have to label every one of my desk with my name and room number because Should they take all. Be done? Before I leave for summer. Don't they do that every summer? Have yeah. they done that before? Yeah, we have to do that every summer. Yeah. Well, if it's already done, why do you have to do it again? That table doesn't have my name and room number on it. Oh, was it moved here from somewhere else? No. We label it all because they move all of it in the hallway mm -hmm. in the summertime so they can come in and clean and wax the floors yeah. and then they move it all back. But they have to know which rooms to move it back to. Because all the teacher stuff goes in the hallway oh. for a few weeks. I bet that looks pretty crazy. See your brain die the wax. Okay, are you guys done with questions? Yeah. Okay, if you do see something else, please just bring it up and ask. 